everyone and welcome to the Junkatura Masterclass series. My name is Bethany Woolley and I am a fashion designer from Dublin, Ireland and I am here to share some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to help you along your creative journey. So today we're going to be focusing on the creative process and how to find inspiration and how to start. So this is something that I think a lot of people struggle to grasp initially. Um, especially because everyone seems to have their own method and own way of doing it. Um, but don't worry, I will be showing you the basic techniques that literally every single designer uses to create their own creative process. And you can use these techniques time and time again to maximize your own potential and become the budding young designer that you are. So let's get started. The creative process can be broken down into five stages, which is preparation, incubation, illumination, evaluation, and elaboration. Now that all sounds really confusing, and it kind of is, and it's totally irrelevant. We're only gonna be focusing on stage one, which is preparation. And that's arguably the most important one anyways. So yeah, preparation, what does that entail? So by definition, this stage is where you gather information and materials, identify sources of inspiration and acquire knowledge about a problem at hand. So how exactly do we start this? Well, the first step is to find your inspiration. And I know that sounds ironic, but that's the way it is. And how you do that is you literally just keep opening your your eyes from now on and what I mean by that is just be so vigilant in everything that you are doing so if you're walking to school if you're on the bus if you're going on a walk through the forest on the weekends or whatever it is that you're doing from now on just keep your eyes open and soak in the world around you and how you do that is by taking photos and or sketches or whatever medium you love to do and just constantly be taking photos of everything that catches your eye. And because you are so aware that this is what you're doing, you'll be surprised at how many things are just catching your eye that you never even noticed before, even if you walk past it like a thousand times. It's also super important to note here to not put too much pressure on yourself. I know it sucks when you aren't feeling inspired by anything, believe me, it happens all the time. And it can feel like you're kind of stuck in one place. But if you just keep trying and you keep taking photos and you keep just looking for that inspiration, eventually it will jump out of you, I promise. And when it does, you won't be able to stop thinking about it. Your mind will be racing and you'll be full of ideas. So all you have to do is keep trying and have fun with this. That's the main message I need to get across. That don't be so hard on yourself. Just have so much fun with this. My top tips is definitely to have a physical item that you can either photograph or take home with you to sketch or draw. And the reason I say this is because you can get a lot of inspiration from an item or something that you can hold. Um, because you can keep referring back to it. So you can look at the tones, you can look at the shadows, you can look at the shape, you can look at the texture, the color, and you know, you can focus on different things every th time you go back to it. So I do think it's like super important for you to have something that you can at least access easily to be able to get, get inspiration from. Okay guys, so this is just an example of one of my design development pages. And what I did here is I was really inspired by a derelict building that I passed on my way to college every day. And I just started taking loads of photos of it, like from different angles, close-ups, whatever I felt like, just kept taking photos and literally filling up my entire phone full of it. And then what I did is I printed out the photos um, as best as I could on some really nice paper. And what I did here is I started tracing off different elements of the building that I saw just to get some more abstract shapes and just layering them on top of each other to develop either a print or some interesting shapes coming from the building. And all of these things informed either print or shapes of things that I created later on. Just to help you better understand that guys, here's something that I took directly for my designs. I put tracing paper over this chimney here and took the shapes from here and wondered what I could do with it. Here's the tracing paper 
these are the lines that I was taking and I just started layering it on top of the croquis and moving it around and seeing where I could put it to make it look cool and it came up with this incredibly interesting shape of a sleeve and it's very unique and not done before so this is something that you can definitely use and that all came from these shapes here. If you have an idea that is a little bit more conceptual and you can't really relate it back to a phys physical object, what I would do is do an absolute ton of research and you can utilize things like online articles, your library, books that you know related to the topic. Just keep delving and diving and thinking of things that you can relate to this topic. And then what I would do is I would do a mind map. So a mind map is an incredibly useful tool that most designers I know will use to really delve into their idea and kind of flesh it out and make it as thought out as possible. So I'm just gonna show you an example of a mind map I did for a previous project. Okay guys, so what I'm showing you on the screen is the mind map that I did for the 50th anniversary of Sunset Malibu Barbie concept. This was something that I did for a trend forecasting project um, and it was for spring summer 21. So as you can see, I just put 50th anniversary Sunset Malibu Barbie in the middle and I just started thinking of words associated with it. So we have the toy, surfing, it's related to the beach, it's related to Malibu, it's related to the 70s, sunsets and Barbie. And from those headings, I just said words that are associated with each thing. So for surfing, we've got sporty, colorful, relaxed, ocean, sand, surfboards, surf suits. For beach, it's seaside, ocean, sand, shells, relaxed, sun, sand castles, and so on and so forth. What that really does is it, it makes you see different sources of inspiration from the one theme. So as you can see, the words start interconnecting then and everything just starts to join up. So you have the ocean that is connected to seaside, the surfing from Malibu is connected to the surfing top heading, like they're all connected and you can start to see threads appearing here. And what you can do is you can develop this further by taking a word such as ocean and doing a subheading for that. So you could say that it is blue, there's an ecosystem, talk about what fish is there, list the oceans that are in the world, like whatever it is that you wanna do under that subcategory or what you can think of. You can just keep going and going and going with this until you completely run out of ideas or come to a dead end. And that's what you wanna do. You wanna keep going with this and keep expanding so you just have tons of sources of inspiration. So now that you have explored your concept fully and you've decided that there is enough sources of inspiration for you to go off, it's time to make a mood board. So a mood board is literally just a page with images on it that kind of represent the theme or the mood that you are trying to capture in your designs. So say if you were going for a really airy, dreamy, flowy collection or design, that would be represented in the pictures. It would be quite, you know, dreamy and ethereal and all that kind of stuff. And if you were going for, you know, more grungy feel, you'd kind of go for more darker themed images, probably darker colorways, that sort of thing. Now I really don't want you to get too bogged down by a mood board because you know they're very much associated with if you're designing a full collection or you know that sort of thing. I want you to have fun with this so I would just collect as much Im images as you can and these can come from sources like newspaper clippings, uh, magazines, uh, Pinterest boards, um, anything like that uh, and just start putting them together in things that look visually similar. So I would just gather as much ideas as you can and then start putting them together and see what looks good and what one you're really feeling and then go from there. You can also create boards such as style boards, muse boards, texture boards, whatever type of board it is that is gonna help you visualize what exactly you want to design. So don't just feel restricted in the mood board. If, if you're feeling stuck with that and it's not really helping, then do a different type of board. And I think a really good resource for boards is Pinterest. 
And what I usually do for Pinterest is I create two different types of boards. One of them is usually for the mood or the theme. And the second one is usually, it's either muse or it's like fashion or runway images that I like or that I really wanna incorporate into my own silhouettes. So I'm just gonna show you how I utilize my Pinterest now. So here's an example of some of the boards that I use for Pinterest. As you can see, I have so many different headings and so many different ideas. It's just, you go through a rabbit hole when you're on this site. But here's an example of when I was pinning for Malibu Barbie. This would be the mood and the theme images and everything that I was going for here. And here was my muse board. So that was more the fashion that I was going for, the type of person that I was going for, and that would all be pinned in here. So if you go on to the trend board, you can see, you know, it's all to do with surfing. It's very 70s. It's print based, very retro, but street styly, that sort of thing. So you really get an idea of where I was going with it. And then if you go into the Muse board, you can see that it's mostly to do with the style. So I was looking at the, the style of t-shirts or what kind of garment I wanted to make, what silhouette and that sort of thing. So now that you have your inspiration, your mood board or whatever other boards you decided to do, it's time to start sketchbooking. So I really want you guys to have tons of fun with this one. I think people really overthink sketchbooking and think it needs to be amazing and incredibly artistic. And it's great if you can do that. But if, if you feel like you are scared of that, I really wanna like hammer it into you that you don't need to be. The whole point of sketchbooking is for you to think through your thoughts on your idea. You know, you're having fun with it. You're gathering information and ideas and putting them down onto a page to see if they really work. So it's really for you to explore your own creativity, have fun, no one needs to see it, and believe me, no one ever sees the actual full sketchbook of any designer. There are so many throwaway pages that people don't want others to see, so just don't put pressure on yourself to have it looking perfect. So what I tend to do for sketchbook pages is I'll take the photo that I took of my physical object and I'll stick it on the page, I'll put some tracing paper over it and I'll start tracing around different areas of the image that ca caught my eye. Um, and I'll put it beside a photography image that I thought represented the mood. I might stick some fabric on there, some texture. I might do some drawing, some painting, whatever. Whatever it is that you feel comfortable exploring your ex uh, or expressing your creativity, go for it. So once you have done these things, you should have a fully thought out concept and you are ready to start designing. I just want to tell you guys that it is totally normal to have a creative block at any point in this creative process. And when that happens, it's so important that you just walk away from whatever it is that you are doing and go distract yourself, go for a walk, go meet up with a friend, go for a cup of tea, go for a workout, whatever it is that will get your mind off it. And the reason I say this is because when you step away, your subconscious starts stewing it over and starts thinking and it just starts working in the back. And when you really distract yourself and take yourself out of the situation, you'll have this eureka moment, this like, aha, I have it, I have the idea. And you will come back and you'll be completely inspired again and you'll have tons of really amazing ideas. So it's super important to just give yourself a break if you do feel this and it, it never goes away. It happens to every creative. It's just part of it. So don't be scared if you feel like you're stuck or you can't move past it. And that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed doing it and sharing all my knowledge with you guys. And I really hope it was helpful. If you feel stuck in any way, you know, don't be afraid to watch this video back, contact me on Instagram if you have any questions, no problem. Like just, you know, work on it and enjoy the process. That's what I want you to take home from this. It's, it's all supposed to be enjoyable even if you feel the slightest bit stressed. But stay tuned 
uh, with Junk Couture. Follow them on Instagram and on YouTube because they are releasing a video a week of different masterclasses and they are incredibly useful and resourceful. So I look forward to seeing you guys again and seeing what you guys can create. And thank you for joining me.